guys this is my third video I hope that you are still keep watching my video and when you have something that you don't understand please ask me as soon as possible okay I hope that nobody skip my video you watch because I will send all the explanation in the video so guys this is our learning objective we will uh, study about how to draw the electric field okay and also we will study about the charging by inductions induction means that without touching okay and you we will discuss about I will repeat again the difference between conductor and insulator and the last one the most important one is the applications what is the advantages and the disadvantages of the static electricity so guys uh, to understand about the electrostatic inductions maybe I need to recall again my last videos about the difference between the insulator and the conductor you have already you have already learned that in the insulator the electron is burned it's bond firmly it means that the electron is attracted strongly by the nucleus in one atom so is it not easy to remove the electrons we need to give the force or we can uh, we can give a force or we give the friction or we rub that okay to remove the electrons in the insulator so that's why we call that as the charge by rubbing okay but in insulator we also can charge by using the inductions you can see the picture below okay this is the example of the charging by inductions okay the balloon is positively charged I think you have know why it's positively charged right because the electron is removed it gain sorry it lose the electron so that's why it's become positively charged and at the first before you bring any charged object near the wall the wall is neutral you can see that the amount of the positive and negative is equal and the charge is distributed evenly or we can say that there is no charge in here when you touch the balloon near the wall okay, in here and you can see that the positively charged balloon attracts the negative charge in the wall or we can say that it start to separate the electron move remember guys the only one that can move is the electrons so the electron move and leave the positive or leave the proton in other side because of the attractions with the between the electrons and with the balloon okay so because of this then it causes of an attraction force the electrons and the positive object they will attract each other okay so finally the balloon can stick onto the wall because the positive charge balloon attracted by the electrons okay is there any repulsion yes there will be a repulsion between the positive balloon with the positive part here but it's further okay so the repulsions will be smaller than the attraction so this is what makes the balloon stick onto the wall okay so the process when the wall uh, from neutral become the charge become uh, negatively charged we call as the charging by inductions okay but for the conductor because the electron only can move freely the electron can move freely so you cannot use rubbing methods because the electron can move by itself without rubbing freely to move so the only way for you to charge the metal is using uh, an induction method so how to charge the metals by using the induction we are going to discuss in the next slide so you can see that there are two metal spear so this is the two metal spear made for metal okay and there is an object yeah that bring near to the metal spear so this object is negatively charged object okay and the metal spear is touching each other there is no any gaps between them they are touching and you have to remember that the metal spear is uh, supported by the insulator okay 
So there's no way for the electron to go away to the ground or lose its electricity. Okay? So when you bring the negatively charged object near the metal sphere, so the induction will be happen. And you can see that yeah, the polaris polarizations occur. The electrons will repel into the furthest side or in the Y sphere and left the proton in X sphere. Okay, you can see that it starts to divide the charge. Okay. So after the electron is distributed to the furthest the farthest area or in the in the Y metal sphere, then you can separate them. Okay, you separate them, separate the two metal sphere. Okay. Of course before you separate them you have to make sure that the rod the charge object still in the positions okay and then see what will happen so you will get two metal sphere with the different charge the x1 will have less electrons or we call as positively charged the y will gain the electrons or negatively charged So after the metal spear has already separated between X and Y, then you can remove the charge object. Okay, can we change the positions? Can we remove the charge object first, then separate later to get the charge metal spear? You cannot do it. Why? Because when you remove the metal spear, Sorry, when you remove the charge object before you separate them, then it means that there is no uh, there is no charge again near the sphere, right? If there's no charge, then there then the electrons will return back to the to the to the initial positions. So they will become neutral again. Okay? So the procedure they have to do is you have to separate them before you take away the charge object. Okay? You are not allowed to take away the charge object. After that, you separate them. Then you will not get the charge metal sphere. The next section, we are going to study how to test. How can we know that an object is charged or not? So what is the device that we are going to use to test the charge yeah, in the object? This is a gold leaf. This is a gold leaf electroscope. Okay, the device that that, that is used to check or to measure or to detect an object have the static electricity or not. So the gold leaf electroscope consists of the metal cap in here, yeah, metal cap. Okay, and after that, there is a metal rod here. Connect until the base. Okay, and this is the insulating plug insulator make sure that there is no uh, electric uh, static electricity that can go away from this electroscope and after that the, the base one here this is the metal plate yeah metal plate and in here this is the gold leaf the gold leaf Okay, and the electroscope is surrounded by the glass window. Okay, and there will be a wooden metal case. Okay, insulator, yeah, this is a wooden. Wooden metal case, okay. Sorry, uh, the wooden case or use a metal, wooden or metal. Okay, if metal, then you have to make sure that the electroscope is grounded. Okay, then how it works? If you put the charged object near the head of the electroscope, yeah, just bring it near. Then, for example, this is a positively charged one. Of course, the positively charged object will attract the electrons in the electroscope. So the electron will be attracted in here. Okay. Or the metal cap will be negatively charged. 
then what is the effect? The base or the metal plate in the below will have less electron because the electron has already go away to the go to the metal cap. So left the positive charge in the bottom. Okay? So because they are having the same charge, so the result is the leaf will deflect or will open. There will be a force that separate these two metal part. So if you don't touch the charge object with the metal cap, with the metal cap, right? You, you don't touch it. It's open, right? But after that, you remove it away. You bring this away. Then the leaf will return to the initial position again. Yeah. So what will happen if you touch this? Okay, this is the first one, right? The second one, you touch. There is a contact between the charge object and the metal cap. Okay, if you touch it, then the electrons will flow. Okay, same flow to the metal cap and will be distributed into the charge object. So the electron will go to this object. Okay, and then what is the final result? When you remove it, okay, the electron, some of the electron has already has already leave the electroscope. Okay, then the effect is the electron will be shared between the electroscope and the metal, uh, then the charge object. For example, there are two electrons flow to the metal rod. Okay, then cancel the two positive charge. Okay. And there will be two proton left in here. So the electrons still open even you remove the object, remove it away from the electroscope. So number two method is the way to let the electroscope in charge. Okay, so how do we remove the charge of, from the electroscope? easy you just touch it when you touch it okay or you connect with the conductor then the conductor will absorb sorry in this case the conductor will give the electrons to the electroscope then the conductor or your body will neutralize it and at the end the leaf will close again back to the initial positions so in this diagram show that the electron has already positively charged okay how can the electron is positively charged okay I have already explained in my previous slide but I will repeat again so how so at the first the electroscope is neutral so the leaf is closed okay this is the first one is neutral then the second one you bring the charge object in contact with the electroscope okay in contact must be in contact touching because if no touching then the charge will not stay permanently in the electroscope okay so you touch it touch with the positively charged object when you touch it so there are some electrons will flow to the object and neutralize this Okay, but of course will not fall will not flow all they will share okay so if there are four positively charged here then the two will be neutralized it okay then it will be shared between the electroscope so it means that in the leaf will stay two positive charge here so this cause the leaf open okay if already like this yeah the charge in the object will be reduced okay and the electroscope will become in charge and you separate these two then you will get the positively charged electroscope then how uh, how about if we bring the others object in the charge electroscope okay See number B picture, right? 
director scope initially in charge initially is positively charged right then we bring the negative charge object above the cap then what will happen okay so in this case of course the negative charge object will repel the electron inside the electroscope repel into the further side okay so electron will go down electron go down so what is the effect the electron will neutralize some positive charge in the leaf so you can see that yeah the force will be decreased because the charge is reduced in the leaf so that's why the leaf is closer Okay. How about if I bring it lower? Yeah, I bring it closer to the electroscope. It means that I will increase. Yeah, I will increase the repulsion force. Repulsion increase because I increase the, I decrease the distance. It means that the force will be increased. So it has more electrons that is repel to the leaf. Okay. The electrons that goes to the leaf will neutralize all, yeah, neutralize, neutralize the charge in the leaf. So the effect is it causes the leaf close. If I keep move it closer, okay, until it's very close with the electroscope, then the repulsion force will increase larger again. And there will be more electrons going down. Okay, if there are a lot of electrons going down, then there will be a possibility for the electrons in the leaf excess or too much electron in here. So because there are a lot of electrons that have been repelled by these rods, so the electron in here will be a lot. So if there are a lot of electrons, it means that the leaf will become negatively charged leaf as we have learned it if the leaf is equal charge then they will repel again yeah equal repel okay so i'm going to give you the task three okay i will not type it here so i have to make sure that you watch my video so the task three is for number one please explain if i want to get the negative charge electroscope okay i want to have the electroscope that negatively charge what is the step that i should do okay you can draw and you can explain step by step then task number two is what will happen if the negatively charged electroscope okay and after that i bring the positive charge positive charge object yeah to the negatively charged electroscope like this picture but I changed it okay the electroscope is negative electroscope is negative but the object is positive then what will happen please write down in the task 3 then I will check it now we are going to study about the danger of static electricity so the elect static electricity have the disadvantages okay you have learned it in my last video that the 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 clot yeah the lightning in the clot is dangerous and can cause damage okay how to overcome this so our building if we have a tall building it has already a cube a cube with the uh, lightning rods Okay, so actually, what is the lightning rod? Lightning rod is just a conductor, yeah, usually made from the copper. And you can see this in the tall building in our school. At the highest, or at the top, or at the roof, there will be a sharp metal, yeah, sharp metal like this. Okay, so this is the lightning rods. So, how the lightning protect us from the dangerous effects from the lightning? Okay. So lightning rod is connected to the ground. Okay, there is a there is a connection to the ground. So lightning rod is quite similar with the grounding wire. Okay, but it's connected to the ground. Okay, 
So the lightning rods will uh, absorb will absorb the charge that is given by the thunder cloud. But before it absorbs, the lightning rod also can reduce the strain of the static electricity in the thunder cloud. How it works? So, for example, the thunder cloud is negatively charged in here. The, the, the negative area is the one that near with the building. Okay. So, because of the negative charge in the thunder cloud, so the charge is very big. Okay, the very very huge. Then it will induce the lightning rods. We know that the electron is negative. It means that it will repel the electrons in the lightning rods. Okay. So the electrons repel by the thunder clot okay and goes to the ground okay so at the end the spike or the, the end of the lightning rod will be positively charged okay so if the spike is positively charged then the spike will attract the electrons in the air that surround the lightning rods okay so because the lightning rods attack attracts the electrons near the air that it creates the positive air molecule okay positive air molecule because the air molecule and the lightning rod is equal in charge of course they will repel right okay so the lightning rod is lightning is positive the lightning rod is positive yeah, this is positive light lightning rods. The air are so positive because the electron has been taken by the lightning rod and sent to the ground. When the air is positive and the lightning rod is positive, then there will be a repulsion, right? Then the positive air molecule will be repelled. It will create like a wind. Yeah, the stream of positive air molecule. And when the winds blow to the thunder clots, the positive air will take the electrons in the clot. So what is the effect? Then the thunder clot will become less dangerous. The amount of the electricity or the electrons will be reduced. Some will be neutralized. Will be neutralized by the stream of positive air molecule so it reduces the strain of the thunder clock if the thunder clock still can strike the building then it will strike directly to the lightning rods okay it will not go to the building but goes to the lightning rods because negative will go to the positive object lightning rod is positive right and it's it's okay for the lightning rod because the lightning rod just send the charge from the thunder cloud into the ground so the building is safe it will not get attacked by the lightning so the other dangerous uh, effect from the static electricity is the aeroplane okay so when the aeroplane fly in the in the sky so it has a rubbing uh, effect with the air around the sky so there will be a possibility for the build up of electricity in the body of the aeroplane okay but and this is dangerous this can cause the explosion to the aeroplane so that's why the engineer thinks hard how to eliminate this okay one of the solution is they are using the tire the wheels yeah yeah that conductor okay have you ever seen that when the aeroplane is landing, there is a spark on the wheels? Okay, the spark can be cause of the friction, but also can be cause of the discharge. The air, air, aircraft or aeroplane discharge the electricity. After the aeroplane landing, usually they still connect the aeroplane's body with the ground to eliminate all static electricity that build up in the body of aeroplane so that's why yeah it's safe it doesn't it doesn't harm the people inside there it doesn't cause the explosion 
because the static electricity can cause a spark and if the spark occur in the petrol tank the gasoline then it can cause the explosions okay and the process of filling the petrols to the aeroplane is also risky because when the this is the pipe right the pipe and when the gasoline flow with the high speed from the tank from the tank into the aeroplane body it's just like a rubbing right so there will be a possibility for build up the static electricity okay in the body of aeroplanes okay so it's dangerous also it can cause an explosion so what is the solution the solution is before the filling petrol process happen they have to make sure that yeah there is a connection or we call it as bonding cable the cable that connect the tanker truck with the aeroplane okay so this cable is used to make sure that there is no difference of the charge between the trucks and the aircraft and also the aircraft must do the grounding okay to make sure that there is no any static electricity that still stay in the body of aeroplane okay so when they are connected then this allow the charge to dissipate or to disappear okay the other disadvantages is the surgery room or the operating theaters have you ever seen this okay and this is the surgery room they have to design the surgery room free from the dust and germ but we know that dust and germ is easily to be attracted by the static electricity so they have to make sure that there is no static electricity in the room so it means that there is no device that can attract the dust and germ okay how to do it they will uh, connect usually the device will have the grounding wire the wire that connect to the ground okay and most of the most of the device that India use the metal right because the metal is the conductor that can flow away the static electricity okay and the floor yeah, usually the floor is designed by using a conducting rubber the one that exists in the car tires in the aeroplane tires also applied in the medical in the operating theater to make sure that there is no build up of the static electricity that can cause uh, the attraction with the dust and germ of course this is dangerous because can cause the infection to the patient in the surgery room so the other uh, dangerous effects from the static electricity is in the electronic devices or in computer so as we know that our body they are possible to contain the static electricity so that's why if the static electricity in our body exists and we touch the electrical component like this okay you can see in the camera this is the this is the processor of computer okay and it's very dangerous because it could it could damage the electronic devices okay so that's why most of the electronic devices they have to have a good packaging so they have to keep inside the anti-static pack you can see my video in here this is the hard drive hard drive you see surrounded by the anti-static bag so the function of this bag is to prevent the static electricity damage the component inside there okay and when when the mechanics or the technicians fix the computer they have to eliminate the static electricity from the body use the anti-static wristband you can see in this picture this person are, is wearing the anti-static wristband okay but if you want to fix your own computer actually you don't need to buy this okay you can eliminate the static activity from your body okay by what usually I use a short pan and I sit on the floor then it means that I do a grounding so I eliminate my body my static electricity in the body 
there are a lot of advantages of static electricity. Okay, one of the example is we use the static electricity to filter the dust or the ash from the burning of the coal. Okay, how it works? So the smoke that contain the ash and dust that go out from the chimney, it will pass a wire or the mesh. This one is the wire, the mesh. Okay. The wire and the mesh will give a charge to the smoke particle. Okay. Then after you can see that the at the first is neutral, right? When it passed the wire or the mesh, it's become charge object. Okay. So in this case, it's become negatively charged smoke particle. Then after that, it will go to the next part. Okay. So this is the plate, yeah, the plate that also contain the opposite charge. Opposite charge will attract the dust particle in there. Okay, so the smoke that go up from this filter unit will be the smoke that free of the dust, dust and ash, ash, yeah. Then later the ash will, after it stick on the stick on the, the the surface of the plate it will be collected here yeah. we'll collect it and we can reuse this again for the next for example use it use it as a building materials so this is very useful to prevent the dangers of the dust and the smoke particle okay the next application is in the photocopiers or laser printer I think this is very familiar, right? All of us has ever used this photocopier. Did you know that it used the static electricity to work? So how it works? Okay, the main material or the main component in the photocopier and the laser printer is the drum. Okay, the drum in here, it will have a charge. Okay, so in this case, yeah, the drum is negatively charged. Yeah, the rotating drum is negatively charged and when there, is, when there is a bright light shine on the paper the one that we are going to copy this one book then it will be reflected to the drum okay reflected to the drum and the negative charge in the drum will escape or dis disappear when exposed with the light so the light will make the negatively charged in the drum disappear so the one that's still available is the writings or we call as uh, electrical shadow so this is the the for example the, the one that you're going to copy right you want to copy the a right a and the bright light shines to the a right and this is the drum and the first is it's uh, negatively charged So the bright light will make the negatively charged disappear. So this all disappear, 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 disappear. But only left electric shadow of A. Yeah, the one disappear. Okay, clear? So this is called as electric shadow. Okay, then after that, the toner. Or the ink, yeah, the ink in the in the form of powder, okay, will get charged. Okay, so what is the charge of the toner? The toner will have the opposite charge. In this case, it's positively charged. So when the ink is given to the drum, then the ink or toner will be attracted to the electrical shadow in here. So the ink will goes here, ink. But the ink will not attract to the one that no charge, okay? Only attracts with the electrical shadow or the A shape that we are going to copy, okay? And after that, the negative charge pieces of paper, okay, there's a paper in here and there's a charge also, okay, will attract, will attract the ink or the toner, 
yeah, in the drum, okay, the track. So the electric shadow is move into the paper. So move into the paper. So this is the E. Paper. After that, the paper will be heated. When the paper is heated, then the ink or the toner melts and fuses onto the paper. So that's why you can read or you can see the image that the duplication from the one that you are going to copy. Okay, for the laser printer, it has the same uh, way of working with the photocopiers. The different only in the drums. If in the photocopier, the, 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 the electrical shadow is from the reflections of the paper that you're going to copy, right? In the laser printer, the computer will control the shadow, the electrical shadows in the drums. So the computer will draw or control the electrical shadow in the drums. Then the other process will be the same. So in the laser printer, they don't use any light. They don't use any reflection of the light on the paper, but they use the computer to control or to make an image in the form of electrical shadows. Okay, the next printer that are very familiar with you is the inject printer. I think most of you use this printer, right? So if inject printer, it use a liquid ink. Okay, the ink in the tiny drops, but in the liquid form. That's why inject. So the tiny drop of ink is forced out a fine nozzle, a very tiny nozzle. Yeah, this is in the cartridge, okay? You know the cartridge of your printer. Okay, so uh, when it go out from the nozzle, okay, when it go out from the nozzle, it's being charged. So there is an electrostatic charging unit that charge the ink. Okay, so the ink in charge, and after that the ink will go to the deflecting plate. What is this? This is a plate that contains the, the electricity. Okay, or there is a voltage between these two plates. Okay, then the voltage is controlled by the computer. Okay, so if the, the, the picture or the ink must be in the right side, Okay, for example, the ink is positively charged. Positively charged, right? Then if you want to move the ink into this side, this side, okay, it's the paper, right? So, what should the computer do? The computer will control this voltage. Then, the plate, this one, will be negatively, yeah, okay, not positive anymore. Negative, so attracts the ink closer to the plate, right? And this one will be positive how much the deflection it depends on the amount of the charge in here that is controlled by the computer okay then if the ink will it go to other parts this one for example in here then the deflection plate will be changed the charge I mean the charge so this will become negative this will become positive so the polarity and the voltage is keep changing depend on the image that the computer instructs to form so to create a writing or a letter it needs a lot of drop of ink right so that's why this work very fast okay and then there are a lot of ink that shoots from the nozzle okay the charge object can affect other object without touching because there is an electric field. So in this part, I'm going to ask you to draw the electric field. Okay. So for the positive one, positive charge, right? The electric field will go out. So like this, yeah, the shape. Yeah, draw it longer. This is the electric field for the positive charge object. Okay, if the negative, yeah, the negative charge, the other one, yeah, this one, yeah, the negative charge, then it goes in.
Okay. Then how about if then the next one there are two charge that uh, different different charge yeah, or unlike charge. So how will the uh, electric field? So the electric field will be like this. So one is positive, the other is negative. Electric field from the positive into negative like this shape. Okay. Okay, yeah. Then how about if there are two same charge? For example, positive and positive. They will repel, right? So here is the field. Here is the field. Okay, so how about if in plate? If in plate, yeah, some, uh, the one that you have seen before in the photocopiers, or not, not the photocopiers, in the inject printer, right? There is a, there are two deflecting plate. So how is the electric charge? I mean the electric field. Then if this one positive, 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 okay. This one negative, 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 negative. So they just in parallel. Except the end or the edge. Yeah, it formed a curved shape. Okay guys, so this is the end of our lessons that related with this chapter, static electricity. Okay. Next next meeting or next video I will discuss about the dynamic electricity but before we go to the new chapter please don't forget to complete your class note of course must include the funding graph and also include this note okay make sure that you complete because I will assess the skill or katrampilan based on your works in the class note and also don't forget the task 3 in this video and do it in your homework tab okay and also i send the task okay in pdf and please do it as a task 4 in the homework tab so make sure that you complete all the component or all the requirements before we go to the new chapters that's all guys see you